So now we've seen how we can sign users up and when we do that we create a token for the user and send it back to the browser. So we basically authenticate them right away after signing up. Now we need to do a similar thing for users logging in, only this time we're not creating a new user document in the database for that user. We're just logging in, not signing up. So instead what we need to do is take the email and the password that they log in with and try and match that against a document already in the database. If the email for that user exists in the database, then we need to try and compare the passwords to verify that login. And if they match, we create a token and send it back to the client. Now to compare the passwords, we'll be using bcrypt again, because remember, the passwords for the users in the database are hashes, not the plain text passwords. So we'll be taking the password and then we wanna try and log in with that. So using bcrypt, we're gonna hash and compare that with the one stored in the database. And then if they match, then we'll create the token for that user and send it back. All right, so. Just like we made a static method on the user model for the signup logic, we're gonna do exactly the same for the login logic. So let's open up the user model file to do this. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna leave a little comment right here to say static login method, like so, and then we'll create this by saying user schema dot statics dot whatever we wanna call it, I'm gonna call it login, and we set it equal to an async function. Now remember, we have to use the function keyword because we'll be using the this keyword inside the function. And for it to work and reference the actual model itself, then we need it to be a regular function, not an arrow function. So we're gonna pass in the email and password in, and then inside the function, what do we wanna do? Well, first of all, we want to also check that email and password actually has a value, much like we did up here. So let me copy that and paste it down here because we don't want to even try and log in if we don't have an email and a password. So that's the first little check. We don't need to do the other checks like we did up here because that's just for signing up. If they've already signed up, we know that the email we're looking for is gonna be valid and the password is already strong enough. We don't need to do that again when someone tries to log in. We just wanna try and match them. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to try and find the user in the database with that email. Now we already do that up here as well where we try to sign up. So what I'm gonna do is copy that and paste it down here. We need to change this a little bit then. So I'm gonna change this to user because we wanna try and find a user. We're not just checking it exists. So we try and find one based on that email. And if it exists, then we get that user back. If not, then it's null. So this time I wanna say if not user. So if we can't find anyone with that particular email, then what we want to do is throw an error and we'll just say incorrect email because obviously it doesn't exist in our database. Now, otherwise we pass that if check and at this point we want to try to match the passwords, don't we? We have the user that that email belongs to. Then we want to take the hash associated with that user stored in the database and we want to compare it to the hashed version of the password the user is trying to log in with, this thing right here. Now there's a special method that we can use on the bcrypt package called compare that does this for us. So what I'm gonna do is say const match is equal to await because this is asynchronous, then bcrypt, and then we use a method called compare. So we're passing two arguments. First of all, this password right here, plain text. So password, and then the hashed password. So user dot password because the password property is on the user document. So this is the hashed one right here, and this is the plain text one, and we're comparing the two. And bcrypt is gonna either return true or false, dependent on whether they are the same or not. So if they do match, then basically we wanna return the user, because then we know that that user has correctly provided the right login information, the right email and password. Now, if they don't match, so if, we don't have a match, then we want to throw an error. So we'll say throw error, and this error is gonna be incorrect password. All right, so, I mean, we could just say something more generic here if you wanted to, like invalid login credentials, invalid login credentials, if you wanted to. I'm just being a little bit more specific for this tutorial. 
Anyway, after that, we want to return the use. So if there is a match, if the passwords do match, hey ho, everything's a success. And now we can return the user and we can do something with that user. We can then get their email if we want and send it back to the client along with some kind of token. So now what we want to do is use this login method over here inside our user controller in the login user function. So then let's do this. First of all, inside this login user function, I want to grab their email and password from the request body. So email and password cannot type. Okay, and we set that equal to request.body. So that comes in with the post request. Now, the next thing we want to do is pretty much the same as we do down here, except we want to try to log in the user. So I'm going to copy this chunk of code and I'm just going to paste it up here. So this time we want to try to log in the user. So user.login. And again, we pass in the email and password we're trying to log in with coming from the request body. And remember that function, if we go back to the user model, if everything's right, that function returns the user. So now we're storing that inside this constant, right? So we have access to that user. And if this is a success and no errors were thrown, so we don't have to catch any, then we create a token for that user. And we store that inside this token constant. And as the payload, remember, we have the ID. Then we return a JSON response with a status of 200 with their email and also with the token to say, hey, you're logged in now. Now, if there was an error, we catch that and we return that to the client as well. And that's pretty much it. We can get rid of this thing right here. We don't need that anymore. But now we can save this and we can test this out in Postman. All right then, so first of all, I'm gonna just quickly save this request. I'm also gonna copy this body right here because I'm gonna use it inside the login request because we just made a user with these details, right? So let's go to the login request now. So forward slash users or forward slash user rather forward slash login. And I'm gonna paste this in. Now, before we do this successfully, I'm gonna do this with incorrect credentials. So first of all, let me get rid of the email and send this. Let's see what happens. And it says all fields must be filled. Paste that back in and get rid of the password. Let's test this one. Send that. All fields must be filled, awesome. So let me paste that back in and change this to devs. So that's not the valid email that we signed up with. Send that and it says incorrect email, awesome. So let's get rid of the S and let's add an extra exclamation at the end. Send that and it says incorrect password. Cool, all working. Get rid of that and send it. This should work, fingers crossed. And now we can see we get the email back of the user and the token as well. So we have successfully logged in, awesome. So that is a lot of the back end initial legwork, if you like, done. And now we can start making these requests from our React application. So we're going to start that process by making an authentication contact to store our user state in the React application in the next lesson.